Hello, wonderful people. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this week's Goddess Energy Forecast. For those of you who don't know me, well, first of all, welcome. Welcome to joining me on this, um, on my YouTube channel. Um, or if you are listening to this through the podcast, welcome. My name is Abigail Mensabonsu. I am I am a multidimensional healer. I am an author, best-selling author. I am <laughs> so many tools in my toolbox. Um, I'm a goddess mentor and I am a divine embodiment coach. And this goddess, this energy forecast is something that I do on a weekly basis to show you, to teach you, to guide you through the energies that we will be playing with in the current week. And also bring you the message of what you're being asked to focus on for the week. So Again, if you've been joining me weekly, thank you for coming back and receiving this. If this is your first time joining me, welcome, welcome, welcome. Shall we begin? So this week's energy, when I tune in, there's a couple of things that come in immediately. The first one is, it's time for you to shine. It's time for you to shine. The second part to it, and it, it came in as a question, is like, what needs to go in order for you to shine? What mask do you need to release, take off? What layers do you need to remove in order for your light to come through? So this week we're, you know, of course, the theme is how can you shine brighter? Not only how can you shine, but also how can you shine brighter? It makes a lot of sense with all the galactic energies coming through. It's really about stepping into your own divine light, fully embodying that light. And then allowing that light to radiate out of you to touch others, to shift others, to bless others, right? So um, it's so interesting because there's a couple of things that I'm working on right now. Um, the podcast, the uh, Light Language podcast, and also the Summit, the Light, the light Summit series um, that is going to occur in at the end, during the end... <laughs> At the end of this month, oh my gosh, <laughs> at the end of this month, so the last weekend in February 26, 27, 28th, it will be my Moon Goddess Sacred Sanctum group. So if you're not in that, if you're on Facebook, make sure you join that group because that's where all that summit is going to be and there's going to be powerful, powerful, powerful. The purpose of the Light Summit is to um, activate you, is to activate you to help you embody your light, to help you step it up in your game in a way. And all the guests that will be um, bringing in the light activation, and this will be through light language, light songs, um, light codes, you know, like drawing up um, light codes or sharing your art. Um, it will be empowering you, activating, inspiring you on your journey and your gifts and helping you to connect, connect too with, with your own divine soul language, amplifying that. So it's gonna be really powerful. I'm, in the group is already, that vortex is already expanding. It's quite amazing. And the podcast series is something that has already started. So if you haven't checked out my podcast yet, go ahead and do that. It's amazing interview series. Um, coming through there. It's called Sovereign Divinity Podcast. You'll find all these links in the show notes. So don't worry about remembering. I'll put it all in there for you. And in the podcast, I have been interviewing a lot of amazing people about their journey through light language and light codes and how it started for them, how they currently use it, and why, why they chose to step in the, into that calling. And um, it's been quite remarkable. And even with that, those interviews, you also get a taste of the type of light that they share with humanity. 
And you can imagine me being the interviewer and on the receiving um, end, like sometimes I do like four interviews a day and it's like four light language activations. Like I am buzzing, <laughs> absolutely buzzing. I feel so blessed to be able to create um, this container that brings us all together um, to, you know, for a greater purpose. And it feels really good. So make sure you check those out and just dive in with us. Um, especially if you're ready to step in, shine your light when you're ready, especially if you feel this calling to really step it up in a big way. This is for you. So it's all encompassing, you know, this week's energy. And the beauty of it is that the energies coming through are assisting you in polishing your diamonds so that you can emit even more light. And one thing that's coming through is that the light is not, you know, you're not receiving the light from out, outside. It's not outside to inside. It's from within to outside. So you are tapping into your own soul light and then radiating that outward. You're not going to someone else to, you know, borrow some of the light. You're not, you know, you're, you're finding your own light and then you're shining your own light which means that your life frequency is going to be completely different from, you know, for example, mine or someone else's. Your light frequency might, for example, let's say it's magenta. Another person might be yellow or gold. Another person might be more emerald green, right? When you allow yourself to tap into your own light within, this is where your uniqueness can really shine through. This is also where your true purpose and mission can also come through, Right. So it's all about going within to discover your own light and then radiating it outward. Right. Not keeping it to yourself, but sharing it with humanity. <sighs> so with that said, the goddess is already showing up to, you know, ready to mentor you through this time, um, through this week, I should say. And again, I just want to remind you is that the energies that are coming through are doing exactly that, supporting you on this journey of polishing and shining brighter than ever, of stepping up your game in terms of service, in terms of service to yourself and to humanity, in terms of diving deep and connecting to that, that inner light and radiating that light outward, right? Um, which brings me to the next part that is coming through is heart-centeredness. Because in the heart is the diamond through which the light will shine through. The heart is the diamond through which your light will shine through. So through this process, is going to be a lot of heart-centeredness. You cannot do this work by trying to think your way through it. You have to drop into your heart. So with that said, let's go ahead and get um, centered and aligned and, well, heart-centered. So place your hand on your heart, breathe, close your eyes. If you can, if you're driving, don't do that. <laughs> I want you to breathe into your body. Breathe into your heart. From this place, I want you to see, sense, or feel this beautiful starlight or sunlight within your heart space and breathe into this light source and as you breathe into it it gets bigger more magnetic more powerful and expands from here go ahead and call in the presence of your higher self into your heart and the presence of your holy spirit self into your heart now Feel the essences flow in and amplify that beautiful light field within. And now imagine a beautiful pillar of light coming down from above, from the heart of source, down through your channel, down, 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 through all your energy centers. When it reaches your heart, it anchors into the heart light and allows that heart light to even grow bigger, more magnetic, more powerfully, more brighter. Allow that pillar of light to continue down your channel, going through all your energy centers, through your legs, out through your feet and into the earth, going through all the layers of the earth. Let it go all the way down until you see the heart of the Divine Mother, the matrix of the Divine Mother and the pillar of light 
anchors into the heart of the Divine Mother. And now bring your awareness back into your heart and begin to see, sense or feel the light and the love from above and below flowing right into you, into the center, your heart. And see those two frequencies, those two light source come and join together within your heart, creating and amplifying outward your energetic field. And you might get like a golden green, emerald green um, bubble of light around you or golden, I'm getting like a, a reddish, like a ruby red um, shield of light around you turquoise and yellow but this is just the the combination of heaven and earth the love and light of the divine mother and father holding center within you and then surrounding you with their combined essence their combined love so breathe in here and feel their love surrounding you feel their love expand all around you outwardly Fill in the room that you're in, fill in your entire home, fill in the entire space that you're in and breathe. Beautiful. Now bring your awareness back into your heart. And I'm just gonna create sacred space with light language. Go ahead and just open. The key to light language is not to try to figure out with your mind, but to receive, be receptive and open with your heart. To so stay within your heart to receive this. We see Rasara po atiara waka da kara yara kiara sigara kwa tiara siara waka ah ye sira kwa tiara sa lia salatia wakiara katia wikis atiara wakia ye si atiara sa u atia si watia wa a a atiara si a watia Yes, I was a car gear, sir. A dear, a secure gear, digger as Luga a dear, a wagiaraga. We are sa a dear, a subwa here, Kiara sara kira kisa atira waka atia. Yera sa kuare kira sa kara akiri sa kara kua iara wa iara katia. Wisira sa ka atira kua katira kua iara sa. Kiara sa ka atia wa kia hia sa ka. Irsi wa is atias ati. Kiara sa ka po atia. Kira saka ale e, yakia ti, yakia ta, likia watiara kwakia. Kisa tira sa, yakaria sa. Place your hand on your heart and breathe, allowing this frequency of light language to flow through your entire being. Activating you, opening you up, creating a sacred space for your expansion to support you, opening your heart to receive more of that which brings you the greatest joy, Acting, activating you in the best and greatest way that is for your highest good now. Wakiara sak atiara waka adia. Yar sa atiara sa wakiara karkia. Wetiara sa ki kiaraka. Yara saka atiara kaki. We see atiara sa eyara. Wakiara sa a. Lia sa atiara sa wakiara kakatia. Breathe in the light. Let it flow through every cell within your body. Let it anchor you 
in that centered place between the Divine Father and the Divine Mother, embody their love and their light, open up to receive all that they have in store for you, all the blessings, all the magic. Breathe. Nuasa. Kiara. Anchoring this high frequency now. Anchoring this light now. Helping you to ground your energy. Yasa. Tiara. Suwaka. Tiasa. Sa. Di. Kiata. Kiatakalasa Yara Watiarawaki. Breathe in for me and out. It is done. So I want you to continue to stay in this space of centeredness and coherence as you receive the messages from the goddesses. So if you, before we go there, <laughs> tune into your heart space right now and ask the question, which of these messages is for my highest good this week? One, two, or three? and see which number or numbers appears within your heart space. And once you receive that, go ahead and come back, open your eyes and be ready to receive. So if you're drawn to card number one this week, remember it's about you know shining your light, but it's also about what needs to go in order for you to shine even brightly, in order for you to step it up in your service game right, in your service to humanity and your self game. So if you're drawn to card number one, your card is the Morrigan. So you are working with this goddess, the Morrigan this week. And this week for you, is all about letting go. It's about letting go to tap into your magic, right? So let's see what message is in store for you. Here's the message for you if you're drawn to card number one. Consider your life a magical gift and your experience of it a beautiful opportunity to leave the world a better place. You give that gift back when death comes and ends your time on this plane. Experiences, relationships, projects, and even long cherished dreams are all subject to the natural laws of death and the magic of the Celtic goddess Morrigan. Now is the time for you to let certain parts of your life die and recognize this process as something to celebrate as well as to mourn. Let go with love and gratitude. Leave your fears behind. For in death, there is great magic as nothing can ever be truly destroyed. From the ashes of the old, a new life and new dreams will come to be. Face this time of dying and death with love and courage. Be willing to be empty. Soon the goddess Morrigan will fill you up with magic. A new world will be reborn. This is her gift for you when you surrender your resistance and allow things to be as they are. This last part is very important. I'm going to read that again. This is her gift for you when you surrender your resistance and allow things to be as they are. So again, this week for you is about letting go of anything that no longer supports you or anything that is not you anymore, anything that is not serving you anymore, anything that brings you pain. You know, this could be experiences, memories, relationships, people, places, right? Be willing to let go. And what I'm getting is that 
um, since you're mentoring with this goddess, these things, these places, these people, these experiences, these feelings, these thoughts will all show up for you very clearly. You will know what is leaving. So the, the key here for you this week is to not grab hold to grab onto it, not resist, but to just rather let go of whatever needs to go. Like it will be very, it will be effortless for you if you allow that process to be, it, you know, you will see something like, yeah, that totally needs to go. I don't even know why I kept holding on to it. And then you just release it. It can be as effortless as that. If you find yourself resistant, this is where you feel yourself like we, we live in the memories, we live in the feelings, um, you know, the person coming back into your life to show you the pain that, you know, they, they continuously put you through. Um, you know, if you try to hold on to the people. Uh, so it, it will become very obvious, almost like painfully obvious for you. And again, you know, it will be your choice to continue on the path that does not bring you joy, that brings you pain, that limits you, or you can choose to let that path go and allow the real path, the new path to surface, right? And so good thing is that you have this powerful goddess working with you this week to make this as effortless as possible. So again, card number one, if you're drawn to card number one, or if you received card number one, you are mentoring with the goddess Morgan this week, all about letting go to receive more of your magic. If you were drawn to card number two, there we go. If you're um, drawn to, if you're drawn to card number two, you are mentoring with this goddess Yuki Ona, and this week is a, it's all about staying still. So she brings in the message of stillness. Okay, I love the color of this, like all watery, right? So let's see here. Here's your message. If you're drawn to card number two, if you received card number two. Again, you are mentoring with Yuki Ona this week. The Japanese goddess of winter, Yuki Ona, calls you to a practice of daily meditation and stillness to prepare you for greater productivity and results. Being open and receptive, slowing down and allowing for time to dream activates your partnership with the universe so you can truly set your intentions in motion. This is the key here this week for you. I'm gonna read that again, okay? Being open and receptive, slowing down and allowing for time to dream act activates your partnership with the universe so that you can truly set your intentions in motion. Then almost without effort, you discover the vibrational match in the world of form. Just as the life force quietly builds within a seed buried under snow, so too will the energy build in the seed of your desires before manifesting with no effort on your part. I feel like this is my card for this week. You will find how easy it is to co-create while implementing a practice of stillness and receptivity. Letting others make the first move at this time as you assess and observe the world around you from the profound position of stillness and neutrality. In this way, the world becomes more intimate, yet you know to take nothing personally. When the goddess Yuki Ona comes to support you, be still. This calls in miracles. The action now is non-action. The action now is non-action. Beautiful, right? Beautiful message. So again, if you were called to card number three, you are mentoring with Yuki Ona this week, and she is beckoning you to be still, to be still. And where's that first part? To be open and receptive, to slow down and allow for time to dream so that you can activate the partnership with the universe, right? Which will really put your intention in motion. So this week is just about, it's almost like sitting and just listening. The right things will come to you effortlessly. You don't need to go out there looking. 
you just let it come to you. Whatever is in a vibrational match with you will come to you. So Yukiona, card number two. Mm. Let's move to card number three, the last card. Let's see here. So if you were drawn to card number three, or if card number three came to you, you are mentoring with this powerful goddess this week, the Danu. And she is bringing in assurance. I love that she has that sprouting seed within her hand. Because the last card is about just allowing that seed to gather energy, right? And then this card is about, you know, like you see the, the seed finally emerge there, but with such great power behind it. Look at that. So let's see what this message is. And I kind of have a feeling this is also my card. There are days when you wonder if you're on the right track, if your dreams are valid, if you have what it takes to show up and shine. You may have a you you may have hit a dry spell where it appears that nothing is happening and it makes you doubt yourself. When this earth goddess appears, she is reminding you of the promise of new life, just as fields are often left purposely fallow. Perhaps this seemingly dry spell of yours is really a preparation time. Under the ground of your visible life lies a stream of abundance that is feeding the roots of the seedlings of your intentions planted in your field of dreams. Go about your day-to-day -day life with faith. Danu assures you that the form of your desires will show up in divine timing in an even more magical way than you could ever imagine. Just take that in for a bit. Just take that in for a bit. I think it's beautiful, right? I mean, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if people were drawn to like all three cards or, you know, the last two cards because they all flow together beautifully. You have Morrigan, right, coming in to help you release so that you can receive and embrace more magic. And then you have Yuki on the coming in to help you still your mind, still your being so you can receive what is coming through, right? Not you going to find something, not you trying to make something happen this week. It's just about you receiving and, and paying attention to the seeds that you're planting and allowing those seeds to gather energy so that when it's time for it to flourish, it can flourish right? And uh, this card is coming in to say that, you know, just like in the winter, or when you plant something over the winter, there's no action, you know, nothing showing you that the seed is going to sprout, right? And then all of a sudden, boom, it sprouts. And then, it, it, you know, it grows into this beautiful flower or beautiful tree that produces so much fruit, more than you can ever imagine, right? They're all kind of flowing together. So I wouldn't be surprised if you were drawn to two or more of these cards for this week. So let me just review again. Card number one, you are mentoring with the Morrigan. You're letting go so that you can receive more magic. You can, you can let your light shine, right? Um, Yuki Ona, card number two, you're mentoring with Yuki Ona. And it's all about meditating, sitting still and receiving, right? Receiving wants to come through being patient too. Card number three, you're mentoring with Danu, uh, which she's coming in to assure you that even though things look like they're sleeping, there's quite action happening underneath the surface that when the time comes, it will be, the results will be far greater than you ever imagined. So for me, definitely um, cards two and three really spoke to me. So I have Yukiona and Danu. Um, they just like right on for me. I really resonate with that. So I would love to hear from you, which of these cards really called to you? Um, and how did the message resonate with you? So again, if you are not in my Facebook group yet, make sure you definitely join it, especially with the, the light summit coming up and with all that delicious light language um, action coming up. You don't want to miss any of that. You want to be part of this yummy yumminess <laughs> so go ahead and join that if you are on facebook but all you know 
it's so interesting because usually at this time this is where i would do the light language but for some reason i wanted to come before that so you know we're just gonna yeah if you you feel free to like reverse it and go back to the, the the beginning and get that light language activation but actually throughout this week to support you in whatever you are focusing on this week come back and we listen to it receive that that light language blessing that is coming through um let it support you through this week let it uplift you you know i love light language because the whole purpose of it is to bypass the mind and the ego and get straight to the heart to move things to shift things so you notice that literally miracles happen because you're not here overthinking it and you're not using your ego to trying to make something happen with it it just bypasses all of that, goes straight to what it needs to do, whether it's to activate, to clear, to heal, you know, to move mountains, to make things happen, right? Whatever it is that you need is what you would get from this light language. So if you're curious about light language or if you feel like, you know what, it's been calling me a lot, like I feel like it's just it's right there. Like it's something I'm here to do. It draws me in. I want you to check out the podcast series on my podcast, Sovereign Divinity um, sovereign divinity, and then also join the group for the light summit. So you can really receive those light activations. Um, yeah, it's going to be potent like this month, everything that's coming through is just charging us up. It's kind of like that seed with Danu, with goddess Danu, where we're just like building that, or was it with, um, Yuki Ona and the stillness where the seed is just gathering energy. Um, and I feel like February is that we're gathering energy, getting ready to just sprout, like just spring forth like no other powerfully. So I would love to hear from you how this resonated with you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't yet, also subscribe to my podcast so you can receive, um, you know, more of these light language interviews coming up. And from my heart to yours, until next time, have a blessed week. Bye, everyone.